Hi everyone! So today I'm going to show you how to sew a pad wrapper um, that combines a printed piece of cotton, plain PUL, um, that doesn't use a serger and has no raw edges. Um, I am going to include in the description box the size you need to cut your fabric to to get three different sizes of pad wrapper um, based on what I have in my stash and what I think you need for bigger sizes of pads. Um, the sizes that I think will be most helpful are 5x5 five five inches. Um, these are finished sizes, so 5x5 five five finished size, 6x6 six six and 7x7. Seven seven. Um, the instructions will more or less be the same regardless of the size you cut the fabric to, but that's just to help you get to the finished size that will be most helpful. Um, I cut my fabric to the 6x6 six six size because that's the size I don't really have much of and I figure it could be helpful. Um, also the sizes that I recommend are based on how I fold my pads. So I'm just going to show you an example of how I fold my pads here. This is a 14 inch pad. And how I fold it is the, I fold the bottom up, top down, and then I tuck the wings behind and I slip it into the pad wrapper. So this is about, you know, folded into thirds. Um, so you need to basically kind of look at the width of your pad um, when it's folded up, you know, see how wide the wide is flares, and that will tell you if you should use 5x5, five 6x6, by five, six by six, or 7x7 seven seven size. Okay, <clears throat> so the first thing is to cut your fabric. I have here a printed piece of cotton and a piece of just plain white PUL. So for this um, tutorial, I think in general, the right side of the PUL is the shiny side. So this is the shiny side here. It's kind of, as you see, kind of glossy. And then the knit side is fairly matte. And then obviously the cotton has, the brighter side is the right side, and then there's a wrong side here. So the first thing you're gonna do is take the PUL right side up and your cotton right side down and put them together. So they're basically together right sides facing. Okay. And you want to secure it in place together. Um, it's a good idea to press your cotton before you get to the step so that you don't have as many wrinkles. Um, and it will just kind of help you align things better. You don't want to use pins if you don't have to, but if you do need to use pins, um, the pattern is written, I'm sorry, not written. The tutorial is, is designed with um, quarter inch seam allowance. Like that's the, a quarter inch seam allowance is what I use to give you the dimensions you need to cut the fabric to. So if you have to use a pin, um, you want to pin it kind of along the edge and within the quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to use binding clips. I'm sorry, not binding clips. Um, quilting clips, or you could use binding clips if you have that, just to keep it in place. And what we're going to do is sew all the way around the edge, okay? Um, but leave a turn space in one of the short ends. Either short end is fine. Um, and again, make sure you sew it with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to just um, clip mine up and then move over to the sewing machine. Okay, so I'm at the sewing machine now. Um, I left about a two inch gap. I think two inches is, is good enough for a shape that's this simple. There's not too many curves you need to get into and that you shouldn't have to tug too much. So I'm going to start um, on one side of the gap and then end on the other side of the gap. I, I put two little marks here to remind me where to stop. Um, I'm going to use just a simple straight stitch. Whatever the default length is on your machine should be fine. Again, the important thing is to maintain a quarter inch seam allowance because that's what um, that's the seam allowance that I am using based on the dimensions that I have. If you want a wider seam allowance, you'll have to adjust the dimensions a bit. Okay. So I have on my machine, as you can see, a piece of tape. This is my quarter inch guide on my machine. All from it to back stitch at the beginning and the end. Remember, needle down before you pivot. So you needle down and then you pick it up and turn it. Okay, in this case, I'm not at the quarter inch mark yet, so I'm going to do one more stitch by hand with the hand crank and then turn it and that's better. Okay, so now I'm back on the starting side, so I'm just going to remember to stop 
um, at the other end of the gap and make sure the gap stays open. Okay, and now our back stitch. And take this off the machine and then I'll show you how I trim it and turn it out. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is trim just the four corners and then turn this right side out. Um, I'm not going to trim the other seams because the quarter inch is pretty narrow and I, I'm not too worried about the bulk in the seams because we have to sew over the seams anyway, uh, which you'll see later. So I'm just going to trim these four corners so the corners are pretty sharp. Um, you want to get close to your stitches but don't trim through them. Just cut off as much of the bulk at the corner as possible. Then we have, again, we have the open gap here. If you want, you could have left a turn tab here to make it easier to close the hole when we um, turn it right side out, but I didn't do that because I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so I should just trim these threads here too. Um, and I have a chopstick nearby to help me turn out the corners. So I'm just gonna put my finger in, find one of the far corners and pull that through. Take the chopstick and poke out the corners. And just you can also kind of roll them between your fingers, that also helps kind of get the corners poked out a little bit better. So now you have it turned all the way out. Um, this could definitely benefit from an iron just to flatten it and make sure you actually get the full width that you expect to get. Um, I'm actually going to iron, I usually don't do if I don't have to. Um, you also want to make sure that your turn, the turn space fabric is tucked in properly. Um, I'm going to put a pin in this. Yeah. This is going to be at one of the top edges anyway, so it's not like this part is going to be in contact with any. Um, blood from your pad, so I wouldn't worry too much about getting a hole in this. I'm gonna, I'll just put a clip on it. Um, I'll put a clip, but you can put a pin if you need to. Without and again, I'm actually going to show you the ironing process because it's important not to iron the shiny side of the PUL. I'm only going to pass the iron over the cotton side very gently. I'm going to use, um, I'm going to say like a medium heat. And the main thing you, you just want to make sure that the edges are flat so that you get the maximum width you want to get. Um, from the wrapper. This is an uh, iron and pad that I have on my cutting mat over here. So not ironing on my cutting mat. You know, if you're familiar with PL and you know your you know, limits or whatever, you can definitely use a hot iron, but um, just if you're a beginner and it's first time working with PL, stick to a more cool iron than that. So just kind of make sure that the edges are flat. So now that that's pressed, we have one more step of the sewing machine before we actually get to the pad wrapper part of it. So what I'm going to do is top stitch both short edges and only the short edges. So on one side, that's going to close your turn hole. And on the other side, well, besides just the symmetry of it, it will make sense when we actually create the pad wrapper that it's a good idea to have those two edges top stitch. Because these are basically going to be the exposed edges, right? Like it's going to be, one side is going to be the front of the pad wrapper, one side is going to be... um the edge of the flap. So top stitching is not a bad idea. Um, you could use a decorative stitch if you want, or you could just use um, whatever straight stitch. So I'm just gonna move the camera over here and top stitch. Okay. 
again, we only top stitch in um, the short edges and you want to make sure that you top stitch close enough to this edge that you actually close the hole. So if you use a quarter and seam allowance like I did, you want to top stitch at about an eighth of an inch and then you should do the same on the other side just for the symmetry, but that's not really that important. You should back to at the beginning and the end like you, like you normally do. Okay, so I've top stitched both short edges, um, closing the hole and then just for the symmetry of it. Um, and now we're going to fold it into the pad wrapper shape. Now, there's a couple ways to do this depending on what you want the final look to be. Um, for me, because there's no raw edges, what I'm going to do is fold it with the right, fold it right side out and sew it right side out. So you'll be able to see the seam technically, but there's no raw edges. If you want to um, have this seam completely hidden, I'll show you how to do that as well. So first I'm going to show you how to fold it if you want the seam to be hidden. So what you're going to do is lay it out. Um, again, I'm doing the six by six pattern. So now that we have the fabric um, kind of in the final size, what we want is to have a two inch flap. So I'm going to fold this down and measure two inches from the fold to the edge of the flap. Okay, so that's about two inches there. Okay, and then we're going to fold up this edge to meet it. Now you can do it all the way up to the top or you can bring it down just to like about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Let me do it from this side. That might help. Okay. So if you want to hide the seam, so the seams will be completely on the inside of the pad wrapper, you're going to fold the flap in first. Fold the flap so you get it two inches from the fold to the edge of the flap. And then fold the bottom edge up to meet either all the way up to the top or about a quarter inch down. That's based on personal preference. Okay. And then you take it to the sewing machine and you would sew up. Your side seams. So if I measured it out, it was about a quarter inch seam up this edge and then up this edge, and then you'd have a fat wrapper. Um, I figure since you have, there's no raw edges anyway, I don't mind if the seam is outside. So I'm going to actually fold it the other way. Um, well, the folding, the result is the same, but I'm going to fold it so that the seams, I'm going to fold it and then sew up the right side as opposed to sewing on the wrong side and turn the right side. Okay. So I'm going to take the fabric and turn it PUL side up, okay? Um, and then this time I have to do it the other way. So I need to figure out, okay, I want a six by six. Um, actually, no, sorry. Do the flap again first. So flap down two inches from the fold. So edge two inches from the fold, okay? I mean, don't pin it in place, just kind of get in a guide. And then fold the top up to meet it. But then you should want to take this out and like put that over it. Okay. Hopefully that made sense. So you're going to basically fold it into this final orientation. And if you did the right, cut it correctly, then you should have one, two, three, four, five, six up this way. And then you have a one, two inch flap. And then you can just sew down the sides, quarter inch on each side. So again, that depends on personal preference. Like, do you want, do you mind having a bit of the PVL showing? I don't really mind, and I think it might give it an interesting look. So hopefully that made sense. Um, if you need to rewatch either any part of the folding, you know, just hit rewind. Um, but I'm gonna take the sewing sewing machine and sew up the side seams. So you definitely want to pin it in place once you decided, you know, exactly how you want to fold it. I'll clip it in place because this is quite a few layers now. If you want, before you sew up the side seams, if you like the idea of having a snap closure instead of just the flap, um, I would add it now so that you don't have to try to figure out how to snap it before you, um, so you don't have to snap it after you sew it up on as hard to manipulate. 
<clears throat> so I'm going to swap beside seams, um, and then we look at the finished product. Again, I'm going to sew this just pretty simple straight stitch. Um, you can do a longer stitch length, and this is going to be visible. And because you have more layers, it's pretty thick seam. Um, I think whether or not you're doing the seam exposed or not, um, you can use a lot of stitch length because you know it's a lot more bulk. So I'm going to switch to a 3.5 on my machine. And I get up to an, a, a quarter in seam allowance. Back stitch as usual. Hi again, so my sound cut out um, in my last clip here and basically I'm just showing you the finished um, pad wrapper. My seams didn't come out as neat as I was hoping, um, but I think the overall idea is not too bad. Um, but probably if you, you know, you don't want to risk it, you might want to just do a hidden seam so you fold it the way I showed you um, in the first fold that I showed you instead of the second one. Um, I'm just kind of blabbing on here. At some point I'm going to show you how to fit the pad into the pad wrapper. Um, Showing you that the finished size is correct. Uh, here I am, I think, grabbing the pad. Okay, there, there's the pad. Um, so I'm just showing you that the pad does fit. This is again a 14 inch pad, and it's a 6 by 6 inch pad wrapper. So you can see it goes in pretty easily, and you just fold over the top and it's closed. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, you know, feel free to leave any comments below, and thanks so much for watching. Bye.